Good morning, it's Jeffrey Cohen, President and Founder of U.S. Advanced Computing Infrastructures, Inc., Chicago Quantum. Got a lot to talk about today. I wanted to hit you before the markets opened. So I wrote all this up in our blog post this morning, so I'm going to share it with you. <coughs> markets are uniformly higher today. I'm going to keep Bloomberg up because it's, uh, it's interesting to, to keep track of that. So markets are uniformly higher this morning. And the question is, is this a head fake? Nope, out. So I think it's a head fake. I don't think markets are have any reason to be aggressively higher this morning, but they are. I'm also going to share with you the picks. I'm just going to leave them right here. Let's be honest. I lowered the price of our run down to 100 bucks. Um, I want you to see what you can get here, right? Pre-market every day, I love it. And so, plus we could talk if uh, if you like that kind of thing. So, and there's some other stuff I wanna talk about. So these are our top picks. Um, so the first thing is our model is less aggressive today. Our model's less positive, less life affirming. It doesn't like longs as much. That 0 0.0018 was 0.028 yesterday. So we lost 10 ticks out of 28 of, uh, of alpha or edge. Same picks, Affirm, Cardlytics, Checkpoint, uh, Heliogen, which is some small cap crap stock, Open Technologies, and the TNA, which is an ETF small cap bear 3X. But you also see you could get just as much edge just by buying a firm and open, just by buying a firm checkpoint and open, TNA, checkpoint, open, a firm. These are all, so they're all in this tight range of uh, 17 to 18 ticks of benefit. I need a lot of coffee this morning. It's very stressful all of a sudden. So the model is, uh, it's picking the same kind of stocks, but it's a much smaller edge. So what changed? It's that these stocks blew out their correlations. They, um, how do I explain this? So you look at a stock like a firm. A firm has been in a players club, right? Where it's been managed, it feels like to me, non-normally distributed. It's been managed higher. And all the squeezing that happened, they squeezed the shorts. I know, I had a bet against a firm as it went up and into the uh, the expiration of the last, you know, the last uh, equity options for September, I got killed. I lost so much money that I can't even afford a suit today. I'm wearing my HP Strong shirt. I I'm lucky that the uh, foreclosures didn't come and take my shirt. That's how much money I lost. Well, it's because market players manage these stocks and they manage them higher into options expiration. This week falling like rocks, right? There's no management. It's different. And so it was like the players club. And I think of uh, of equity uh, managers like ARC. They blinked. They let the stocks fall. And so what happens is when you're not kind of minding your markets and you're letting stocks rise and fall, you blow out your correlations, you lose the edge or your alpha. This was not due to big picture changes. When you look at... Um, uh, equity prices yesterday. Let's see if I can pull this up just real easy, real simple. I mean, stocks were down. NASDAQ was down almost 2%, right? Dow's down 1%. S&P's down almost 2%, one and in, one in two thirds. But that's not enough to blow out, to blow out your correlations. Um, interest rates went up. So let's talk about it. Right now, the 10-year Treasury note yield is up significantly from like a week ago. It's like 4.46. It was 4.36. It was 4.26. So you're up like 20 basis points. You're up 0.2%. It's not that much, but what that's done is it's taken mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are over 8%. I, I heard a rumor. Well, here's the good news. You can look right now. 30-year fixed mortgage rate. Oh, it's seven and a half. It's not that much. 
it's still up. It's seven and a half. So seven and a half percent mortgage is a lot. It's maybe not enough to blow out housing, but the short rates have not changed though. And so we look at that. I got this whole morning look thing. I'll show you. Nope. I'm not going to look at that. Where'd it go? Nope. So I'm going to have to show you a different way. So just net net, right? It's down. The, uh, the short rates are not moving. Good question is why, right? But they're not. And so let's go back to um, blog post, chicagoquantum.com. Blog insights number one. Here it is. So, I mean, interest rates are up, so that should make stocks go down. We have six minutes till market open. Pre-market is broadly higher broadly higher much higher so we track portfolios and they are like crazy lower I'm going off screen to our server and if I just take a quick look um, the stocks that we're tracking one that we're potentially gonna buy one we're short one we're potentially gonna short all three are up pre-market if I look at my application platforms which are my riskiest stocks the uh, the e-commerce advertisers they are 100% up or flat. That's so odd. That's, that's growth right there, right? So pre-market changes on my banks and yields and lenders. One is down, Easy Corp. Everyone else is up. Oil and gas prices, pre-market. Oh my God, six are up, six are down. There's like 30 of them that are up and then maybe another 15 are flat. Um, I look at steel, miners, and auto. Steel, miners, and auto, economically sensitive. One's down pre-market. Honda Motor Company. The rest are up or flat. So everything's up. So the Chicago Quantum Net Score picks. Affirm, Cloudlytics, Checkpoint, HLGN, Open, and TNA. We call this the Taylor Swift portfolio because Taylor Swift made a bunch of money. She probably wants to put a couple of bucks into the market. If the market goes up, she makes a ton of money. The Taylor Swift stock picks right here. Affirm, Cloudlytics, Checkpoint, um, Heliogen, Open, and TNA, which is the uh, three times bullish ETF. But again, less ticks. Large cap stocks have been down for days. Large cap is underperforming um, small cap. Let's see if I can find that. Coifin's got a really simplified way to look at it, which is if you look large cap, slightly more red than small cap. Can't really see it there. Let's see if you could see it in Finviz. Go to Finviz. You go to Finviz.com. You go down to the to the map. You go to bubbles. You go to bubbles and you set it up where the index is all. Market cap is 10 billion and above. Your Y axis isn't changed for the day, it's changed for the week. And when you run this out, hopefully you can still see it. There's a couple outperformers. Splunk has a uh, has a bid made on it by Cisco. Mobile Eye Global, no idea. Susano, no idea. Cody, no idea what's going on. But Splunk is an acquisition. Arm, it was a recent IPO. It's down. I mean, it just had a lot of heat to it. We're going to Windsorize this a little bit to um, to 15%. Windsorizing is when you take the extreme outliers out in order to be able to see the big picture better. 1502. 1502. So you see zero. The midpoint is there. There's very few large cap stocks above it. One of them is United Healthcare Group. I talked about that in the blog post. United Healthcare is doing great. Toyota is down, but so there's very few big stocks, large stocks that are up. Amgen, United Healthcare. Now look at the big circles. Nvidia down 10%. Amazon down 11%. Tesla down 7. Al Al Google Alphabet down five and a half. Meta down five. This is odd to me. Eli Lilly down seven. Eli Lilly is a stock market darling. 
Intel down 10, Advanced Micro Devices down 10, uh, Broadcom down 7. Now you can argue each of these has a story. Broadcom, oh, there was an article about how Google may not use them, but it's down 7.25%. Novo Nordsk is down 5. Intuitive Surgical. I mean, so my take to you is this. This is super important. And then I'm going to stop the video in like a minute to go before market opens. Maybe. When large caps are down, what does that mean? Let me pull up the chat. Does anyone know? When large caps are down, what does it mean? Nobody knows. You know what it means? It means people are selling what they can sell. What's liquid? People are dumping liquidity. Right? And the reason they're doing that is because they could sell without affecting the market. They could, they could get out without burning the door behind them or burning the theater behind them. That is not a healthy market. This is not a healthy market. Large caps are lower. Look at that one. Even Apple's down 1%. Apple's like the total darling of the universe, right? And you see that has been down since September, really September 1st. Um, really, it's actually since August 1st. So large caps are down. Do a Google search on exit liquidity. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Now I'm just going to run through, see if there's anything else interesting to talk to you about. But if I go back to the stocks that are dropping. So let's look at some of this negative beta stuff, right? So Jeffrey, what is negative beta? Negative beta are stocks that have a correlation against the market. They move against the market. So the VIX. The VIX has a two, or if you're an ultra, three negative beta. So when VIX goes up, stock market goes down and vice versa. Those those move. Of course, your bear shares. You have an ultra bear and you have a regular bear, 3x. Those are going to move down three to four times. But I got a stock here, U-Haul, which moves down three times opposite. You got a 25% negative correlation for um, U.S. dollar index, bullish fund to the market. That's interesting. Now, you notice gold. You don't see gold. Gold? Gold? No. Uh, a long bond? No. Short bond? No. Anything? Anything out there? No. So my point is that... Um, other uh, asset classes that are normally negative beta, interest rates, <clears throat> gold, oil, whatever you can imagine, all gone. Everything's moving together. Everything's being dumped. This is a, uh, this is a scary moment of consensus. And... Um, but there are stocks that are moving against the trend, right? Atlanta Braves slightly, Pfizer, Chesapeake Utilities. Not a lot of big names, to be honest. Liberty Media, Summit Therapeutics, so some Averu. But what I would say is stay close to your knitting here, which is VIX. If the VIX starts to rise, run, okay? Because it means risk. Risk is uh, risk is becoming uh, more of a play. If the dollar keeps surging higher, run. Those are the ones you got to really watch out for. And our model showing you, you could start to kind of track those uh, those correlations. VIX is still. What I would look at this is the market is still super super sensitive to changes in VIX. So. Where's VIX in the future? So if we look at VIX here on uh, just FinViz, and I don't like to use this particular model, right? I don't like the VIX futures, but it doesn't matter whether I like it or not. It's gone from 14 to 17. Okay, that's a huge increase. That's like a 20, 25% increase. If I look at the CME VIX, which I'm still learning how to, how to understand, that thing was trading at, at 13 99 This number right here was 13.99. It's now 16.97. You're up 3, you're at 25%. You know what, Finviz, I apologize. I was a real not a nice person to you just now. 
Look at that. 17. You go out a month. You, you go out to October 18th, you're at 17 and a third. Uh, so the VIX is way higher. So that should be super negative for stocks. But yet, pre-market way higher. So, I'm going to thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please hit like, please hit subscribe. And um, remember, if Taylor Swift were buying stocks, she'd be buying the Chicago Quantum Net Score picks. And Taylor, if you want to be on the show, just give us a call. Hit the website, chicagoquantum.com, right? Let us know. Give us a like, drop a comment. I'd be happy to have you on the show. And uh, we can talk about stocks. Hey, thanks so much. You guys take care now. Bye-bye.